Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and today we have another episode of Northwoods Scientist. Today I'm going to respond to one of the comments on one of my videos and that is, why is it that we only see one face of the moon all the time? We never see the backside of the moon. Now, why is it that the orbit of the moon, which is between 27 and 28 days, exactly coincides with the rotation period of the moon? resulting in us just seeing one face of the moon. Now that's a process called tidal locking, and let's see if we can solve this conundrum. So cue up the music, and let's get going. Okay, so let's see if we can set this up a little bit. Now on my whiteboard, I have a blue arc up there that represents the Earth, and then I have a little gray circle that represents the Moon. Now those two green dots are what I'm going to call the center of gravity. Those are the points that gravity exerts its influence from. One is near the center of the Earth, and the other is near the center of the Moon and the red line is the vector of force or the gravity between the Earth and the Moon. Now, if you were to imagine that that center uh, of gravity in the Moon, that green dot, was directly in the center of the mass of the Moon, the Moon could very easily rotate around that. Let me show you. Here is a yoke from a beach bonanza. Now, it's got a long tube on it, and that would represent the red line of gravitational attraction. And as you can see, the yoke itself can easily rotate on that line without stretching it at all. Let's go see what happens when we make a few real life changes to this. Well, I'm sorry I got a little blue on you there. For some reason, the color just randomly changes on the uh, video on this once in a while. So here we have basically our yo-yo moon. So we've got the center of gravity of the Earth up on the top in the green dot. Then we have the line of gravity connecting that to the center of gravity on the moon. And as a result of that, like a yo-yo, the moon can just rotate very happily. There's nothing wrong with that. But we have a little different situation in real life. And let me see if I can very carefully explain that so that it's a little easier to visualize. Now here's the problem that we run into. The moon is about 2100 miles in diameter. It's a pretty good size object. Now, do you think that the gravity of the Earth affecting a point right here might be a little bit different than the gravity of the Earth affecting a point down here. Well, as it turns out, that's a far enough distance, and since the force of gravity is the inverse square of the distance, that that actually makes it a difference. So let's look at the moon a little different. So instead of having one big moon, let's take half of the, half of the mass of the moon, and we'll make a little moon out of it. And then right next to it, we'll make a second little moon that has the other half of the mass. And the center of gravity will be the same at both. Now, the center of gravity of this little, or the center of mass of this little moon is right there. And this little moon is right there. The Earth will pull stronger on that moon, or that, that part of the moon, then it will pull on that part of the moon, assuming that the Earth is in that direction. With me so far? So, here's what the result of that will be. Two things. First of all, if you look at the center of mass of the moon, it may be right there. But the center of gravity of the moon might be right there. 
And instead of being completely round, the moon may actually be stretched a little bit into an oval shape like that. Now, if you were to look at the string that connects the center of the Earth to the center of the moon, the center of gravity that is, it's going to connect these two green dots, like so. So it's going to go to this dot right here, not that one. All right. Now, what happens when this, you know, what's the result of this? Well, let's. Okay, so here's where things start getting interesting. Now, in this position right here of the moon, we're going to have the Earth down here. And the direction of gravity is going to go right from the center of gravity straight down to the center of the Earth. Notice that this is directly in line with the center of mass of the moon and of the oval shape of the moon. But what happens right there if we start rotating this? So now we're going to have something that looks like this. We're going to have the center of mass of the moon, and then we're going to have the center of gravity over here. Now, if the Earth is still down here, like so, it's going to pull in this direction towards the center of the Earth. Notice that there's a little bit of an angle here. You see this angle? Now, what happens with that? Now, first of all, the moon is rotating that way. But, because the center of gravity is now off to the left there, it's going to try and pull back right underneath the center of mass between the center of mass of the moon and the center of mass of the Earth. So what's going to happen is it's going to put a torque on the moon that way. So, what will happen with this? Will that leave the rotation of the moon alone? Will it speed it up? Or, because this is an opposing torque, will it tend to slow the moon down? It'll slow the moon down. And eventually, what will happen is another thing that you may not think about. And that is this. If the moon is an oval like that, with a center of mass and a center of gravity, and that gravity is putting a torque on it, some of this gravity pulling it towards the Earth is going to be devoted to that direction because of that torque which means that this one down here will decrease in strength. So what happens with that? Well, quite frankly, because there's less of a pull of gravity on the moon, and the moon is still going around the Earth, the moon is going to move away from the Earth. So two things will happen as a result of this. One, the rotation of the moon will slow down and eventually stop. And the second is that the moon will move further away from the Earth. Okay? So as a result, over billions of years, what has happened is that we have a moon. We have the center of mass of the moon we have the center of gravity of the moon and then down here to the earth it's being pulled directly towards the center of the earth and because of all this rotation this anti-rotation torque here it is eventually stopped and as a result as the earth rotate or as the moon orbits around the earth it will never rotate 
other than keeping this dot right here, the lower dot, between the center of mass of the moon and the center of gravity of Earth. It'll keep it lined up. And that's a situation that we call tidally locked. So the result is going to be, we got a moon out here with a center of mass, a center of gravity, whoops, let's undo that one, that's a little off. We got a center of, of gravity of the moon, and if we draw a line like that, it will go straight to the center of gravity of the Earth. And as it moves around, say over to here, we're still going to have a center of mass of the moon. The center of gravity of the moon will rotate a little bit to keep it in line with the center of the Earth. And as a result, we will always see the same side of the moon. Now let's take this and use and just follow this up with the Earth. Now, the same thing happens with the Earth. So we've got the moon out here, and it's tidally locked above the surface of the Earth. The Earth is actually a little oval as well because of the gravitational attraction between the center of mass of the or the center of gravity of the Earth and the center of gravity of the moon. It does exactly the same thing. It pulls that center of gravity a little away from the center of mass. And as a result, and it also deforms the Earth to be a little bit oval. So, as the Earth rotates, like so, it will move that center of, of gravity off to the side. And for the exact same reason that the moon slows down, there will be a counter torque in there, and that will slow the Earth down. So eventually, as time goes on, there is going to be one face of the moon that we see, that face, and there will only be one face of the Earth that will face it. This side of the Earth over here will never see the moon because the Earth will no longer be rotating. Now, the reason that this happened to the moon before it happened to the Earth is that the moon is a much smaller body than the Earth is. The Earth is 8,000 miles in diameter. The moon is a quarter of that size. Correspondingly, there's a lot more mass in the Earth than there is in the moon. So the Earth will affect the moon long before the little bit of backward tug on the rotation of the Earth from the moon affects the Earth. There you go. Now the last thing that I would like to talk about is can you see these effects on the Earth itself? Yes, you can. Let me show you how. So, we've got the Earth that is sitting right here. And it is surrounded by water. Now, if the moon is out here, it is going to pull on the Earth in basically this direction due to the gravitational attraction of the moon. What will that do? That will cause the water on this side of the moon to bulge out a little bit. And to balance it, there will be another bulge on the other side, like this. And the water on these ends will actually pull in a little bit because some of that water is being pulled out. See? Now, these are the tides. This is how high tide works. Now, there's a tide on one side of the Earth here, and there's a tide on the other side of the Earth over here. That's half a rotation around. Since the Earth rotates once every 24 hours, we get a high tide every 12 hours. 
And on the six hours in between those, we get a low tide. So that is why they talk about this tidal locking because it has to do with, it's seen by the tides on the earth. But as I've shown you, there's a very clear explanation as to why the earth is tidally locking the moon in orbit. And as a result, the same face of the moon is shown to the earth all the way around the 27.3 day orbit because it no longer can rotate because it takes energy for it to rotate against the pull of gravity of the Earth. And as a result, it'll settle in to the lowest energy state there is, and that is with the center of mass of the Moon directly over the center of gravity of the Moon, and that is on a direct line to the center of gravity of the Earth. And any effort to move away from that either way requires energy to pull it. It results in, in, in a backward torque trying to pull it back to that low state. It's kind of like this pen. You know, it can go back and forth like this, but that is its balance point. If I move it up like that, it'll try and pull back to that point. If I move it over like this, it'll try and pull back to that point. This is the same thing that happened with the moon. And eventually what happened is it settled in on that orientation. Okay, so let's just make one final statement here. Now, the moon out here actually does rotate, okay? As we recall, it goes around the Earth about every 27.3 days in a nice orbital rotation like this. And then comes back like that. Now... The, Earth, the moon itself rotates every 27.3 days as well. And the net result is the same face of the moon is always facing the Earth. So it's going to actually kind of rotate around like this. And you see this little rubber thing right here. The same side of that rubber thing is always pointing towards my fingers. It's in the same orientation. And the same thing happens with the moon. So as a result, it's kind of like holding your fist out and watching it go like this. Your wrist is always between you and your knuckles. And that's the face of the moon that we always see. And then the far side of the moon is always facing away from us. So hopefully that made things nice and clear for you. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from northern Michigan. Thank you for taking a few minutes with me today and learning a little bit about the moon. I hope I was able to help you some. So... Remember to like and subscribe to my channel, and we'll keep these videos coming. Take care, guys.